kubaka waka wabuganda. Sao mwenda, e, okuwa kuna kuwa balaza, ate paka uh, sawa ziri, uh, kuwa balaza, paka kuna kuwa kutanu, e, sawa zino mwenda, paka kusawa kumi, tuwa nesomo e, ya sini ya e, yomukaga. E, Kaunge zika no, wa vude vuno, nga tuli mvude wa after lunch, e, visele visingo vunja habana habira mkitasi, vate lo kugama ntipa sumagira, habamba wava kulia lunchi, habamba wava wadi mbele yogama ntuvori yao, haba koje dao kuwa kumacha, nite kataka ya fenunji, nti haba sinia sikita tunawa kuwa na kilasi, eno wansi kumacha, kakati kilasi ya ferio, wano kaunge zuoka, wizano kuwa nga wadoso so kuumulamu, kumanya nito eneo kilasi ya kaunge zuoka, so kano umulamu, ate sawa zino zige nukutuka, ngori yao, o refresh, ede ngeni dajo nizo kubanti, obeda mkilasi, nobeda mbulu unji, kati kuwa ngori waka, o nizo kuwa kone kilasi ya mazi, au kumpi, nobanga, ojirina, nga wete sete sebulu unji, nga buwanga, sumagira moso kunya kumazi, atino becoming a fresh, oba, nugena kumu chinabiru, nabaka kukufesi, noko mwono obeda ngo sobo gobe lirobu unji, kilasi, na wachito, njaga atuko zese mbele, no, obuta kuasa, nti atemu nange, tuko wa, oba, atu wale sumagide, aa, katoso kore, chunuka, nti njinawe kilasi ya mazi wano, ojirina, oba, nusuka ni weba kamu, uh, before lunch ni webaka mwao so budi bagero kutuka buno bokusoma ngo budde bwo uh, buli fresh era ngo sobulo gobero bulunji class to basaba nafe aba Maryland High School abo bali ntebe aba teka mu sente atene banafa aba Greenwood Academy abo bali buwate ne wane chibuli Big Pain Kone Nkumba University aba sala okula bantu bela mu class atene tusoma bulunji na masimira gatuwa aba easy uh, aba gaba easy ba bwenti mutegetere fine Musobolo okulaba mkulaba obulunji wa muambia mita Max Piru kwa ago. Uh, Musomesa ku St. Gezo Centenary uh, SS wano mundeva. Ate ne wakade bafe. Aba musomelo gano agajane school zinamu okubili zaba ni mebeda nga balaba. Chirunji nyo njini idara. Uh, Musomesa wano kuruwa lero tuina mkulu na chibi inge. Uh, na chibi inge Alex. Nga agenda tutuwa la musomo ya Bayroje. Ava Uganda Matazi SS na mugongo. Njaka la mbede mklasi. Aba na musomo Bayroje uh, senior 6. Ne mwe sinia faivu kubwa mbaba mudiwa semi candidacy. Tusabu kubwa nga tukubele ya bulunji, atakila sewa na kuruwa lero etu nyumide. Utelevu, uh, Master Alex, abana babo, bali nze gwe, obede ngo batuwa la mwosomo ili ya bayoloji. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon, gentle people. Uh, I hope you are staying safe and keeping that uh, social distance. Uh, before I begin the lesson, I think it is better to start with God. We are going to have a brief prayer. Uh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A uh, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever it shall be, world without end. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what we are. We pray that you bless us through this session, so that we complete it in your name. I pray all this in the name of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And now, gentle people, uh, last Tuesday we had a sharing uh, on ecology where uh, I talked about uh, uh, energy flow in the ecosystem. We had several examples and descriptions here and there. And I hope after that lesson, you manage to go back and read, and you understand better. Uh, today, in the same vein, uh, the topic is ecology, but uh, there is a certain part of ecology uh, that is a competitive exclusion principle and uh, resource partitioning. I want us to understand it by the end of this lesson. Uh, many at times, uh, questions come from this part. Uh, they may be graphical or uh, questions that require you to write essays. It may be in paper one of biology or paper two. So I want us to revise together today and we get the clear meaning and interpretation of what these two concepts are and how we can relate them. These are the concepts uh, that uh, determine or affect the distribution of organisms in the ecosystem, how they uh, relate with each other how they come to coexist. They give the reasons as to why different species of organisms stay in different parts of the environment. So that is what we are going to look at specifically uh, today. We can go to the, uh, to the next slide and we learn what the competitive exclusion principle is. Now here on the, uh, on the slides you can see that uh, competition between organisms of two different species that uh, persist may result in one competitor taking the resources exclusively 
and the other being driven out, uh, it may migrate away, or it uh, dies out. That is uh, more or less uh, extinction. And this is what we call competitive exclusion. We are looking at two different species. Two species of organisms. Uh, in this spread today, I highly emphasize the word species. Let us understand it. Whenever we are talking about competitive exclusion and resource partitioning, let us zero much uh, on the species, on the word species of organisms. And they must be different species. However, there are also cases where these two species may fail to adapt or they evolve separate niches in the same habitat, separate niches in the same habitat. Now, uh, in this case, these organisms come to coexist. And when they are coexisting, this is now not competitive uh, exclusion, but it is what we call resource partitioning. These organisms learn how to live together in the same environment. They may be using the same resources. They may be using the same needs. However, they may be using them at different timers. Different timers. They may be using them in different ways. Or it may be in different places. This is what we call resource partitioning. Now, the whole of this concept we are talking about today, it was suggested by a Russian uh, microbiologist and ecologist in 1934. That person is uh, uh, G.F. Agos. And I think in, the, in ecology, you have come across what we call the Gauzes principle, or the competitive exclusion principle. And this guy, uh, Gauz, based on uh, two species of paramecium, two species of paramecium, that was paramecium uh, aurelia and uh, Paramecium codatum. These two species of Paramecium feed on bacteria. We are going to see them on the next slide. They feed on bacteria. They have more or less the same resources. However, we are going to look at two scenarios where this uh, gentleman goes monitored them when they are growing in a separate environment and also when they were grown in the same culture. We can go to the next slide on that graph. Now, these two graphs we are seeing are the first one uh, now on your left. The one uh, which shows the, the two curves, each species grown alone. You can see the Paramecium aurelia and the Paramecium codatum. In the separate culture, you can see that both of them were growing and their numbers were increasing up to the carrying capacity. Now, in the first one, when, when they were in a separate culture, it means that they were growing normally. You can see the curves we are seeing in the first graph. It is more of the population growth curve, a sigmoid curve. That is what we are seeing, ladies and gentlemen. You're seeing that uh, from zero to two days, uh, to three days, there is, a, there is a gradual increase in the population, uh, in the population density of each of the species. Then a rapid increase, that is the, the log phase. Then a gradual increase to the maximum. And when they reach the carrying capacity, uh, P already remains almost uh, constant, then decreases. You can see that. This is when they were monitored in separate cultures. You can see that P. aurelia or Paramecium aurelia was growing faster than P. codatum. But they formed, both of them uh, under the separate cultures were able to form the climaxy 
communities because there was no competition. Uh, the competition that arose here when they were in the separate cultures, it is the intraspecific competition. Intraspecific competition. When in separate cultures. That was intraspecific what? Competition. And it arose after the after reaching the maximum. Uh, for P already that is around uh, day 10. Here we can see that uh, the population, uh, the, the relative population density reaches the maximum and then remains constant and later on starts to decrease. Now the decrease may be due to scarcity of resources. When the resources become scarce, what happens? These organisms are going to start competing for the same resources. Intra means within. So the population, sorry, this competition is among the organisms of the same species. They are now competing for the same resources. If we are giving reasons for the decrease, we can also talk about the toxins uh, these organisms produce as they carry out their metabolic key processes. If, we are in a, if at all they are growing in a, a closed medium, we can talk about that. So that is basically what we can see on the graph, on the first graph. Now look at the second graph where these organisms were growing together in a mixed culture. Uh, that is Paramecium aurelia and Paramecium caudatum. We can see that uh, Paramecium aurelia continued to grow. However, at a certain point, that is at day 60, the population of Paramecium caudatum started to decrease. And not only that, it decreased to extinction. When uh, the population decreases to zero, population of the organisms decreases to zero. We interpret that in biology or scientifically, that these organisms became extinct. It may be localized extinction in that, semi, in that very habitat. They may be existing somewhere else, but in this habitat where or in this experiment where it reaches zero, we note that as extinction. We can see here that uh, Paramecium aurelia managed to outcompete Paramecium caudatum. This competition, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call interspecific. Interspecific competition. Okay? This one arises when they are in mixed culture. They have the same resources, the same nutrient requirements, same requirements for growth. Okay? Now, when they are grown together, they compete for these resources. Someone would ask, why is it that between, the, between uh, from zero to four days, the population of both organisms is increasing gradually? Uh, this one we can interpret it uh, like this. Remember, in the first days, the resources are still enough. So the organisms feed uh, when, uh, under minimal competition. There is no competition because the resources are still abundant. Now, when the resources become scarce, this is when the interspecific competition sets in. In here, what are we most likely to experience? That organism that can feed favorably, that can reproduce more, it is going to survive more. And its population will increase more than that which feeds less, which reproduces less. And uh, this one can also be the basis for evolution of organisms in the environment. Now we can see here, ladies and gentlemen, the second graph, that P already has gone, its population is increasing, meaning it is, gone, it is surviving more. However, that of P caudatum is decreasing, meaning it has been outcompeted. Ladies and gentlemen, that one clearly brings out uh, what we call the competitive exclusion uh, principle. Today, I want us to understand this more. 
Uh, I have a model question for you, a guiding question. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Very good. This is a paper two, section A type. I'm going to use it as a guiding question. Always in paper two, a paper two has uh, two sections, section A and section B. A section A always uh, is compulsory. You miss it at your own risk. And it carries 40 marks. How do we maximize the Z marks? Uh, always, you children of God, you fear this part of paper two. Yet it is very, very easy <clears throat> to earn marks from here. How do we earn marks? You only earn marks if we follow the principles. Now, this is slide is showing us the instructions. Men at times, ladies and gentlemen, we do, we do not read these instructions. Let's go back to the fourth slide, please. We do not read these instructions. We just jump and go to the next slide, which, sorry, to the graphical data, or it may be a graph or data in a table, but it is very wrong. That's why sometimes we miss up some marks. Let me read through this. The graphs below indicate the population growth of two related aquatic uh, microorganisms of species A and species B in two sets of culture media. Now, in figure one of the first set, both species were cultured in a long and cylindrical vessel. While in figure two, uh, in figure one, let's imagine that this is our vessel, a long uh, cylindrical vessel. This one, this is where our species uh, were cultured in figure one. Then in figure two, these two species were cultured uh, in a petri dish. This is our petri dish. It is always short, okay? This is the petri uh, dish for the figure two. Now they're asking us to study the two graphs and we use them to answer the questions that follow. Before we move on to the next slide, what is the importance, the importance of this first information given to us? Ladies and gentlemen, what are you supposed to do when you're given such a question? I'm going to be very brief due to time. One, read the instructions. You can even read them three times. As you read them, underline the key words. Underline the key words. Okay? You define these key words. Define the key words. Get the meaning out of these words. Then, try to relate them. Relate the key words to a topic in biology, not chemistry, not history, to a topic in the biology. This one's going to help you to zero your minds and thinking to this topic. Let it be your basis before you bring in other topics, because some questions may marry one or two topics. But before you bring in other topics, get a topic of reference. When you understand this, these instructions very well, you are going to get a clear meaning and interpretation of the data given to you because this is a data-based question. The good news I have for you is that the marks you're going to earn, a lot of marks, almost 45%, of these 40 marks, which do not involve any biology, but because you have clearly understood the question, 
you have clearly interpreted it, the instructions in the question. Okay, let's now go to the next slide and we look at the graphs. These are the two graphs. You see figure one, uh, these ones were cultured in a long cylindrical vessel. And we are more or less seeing the other, the same scenario as in the other graph I showed to you. This time around they have not told us that this is a paramecium, this is what they have told us. This is species A and species B. Ladies and gentlemen, these graphs have the independent variable that is the horizontal axis. That is time in days. Then the dependent variable, that is number of microorganisms. It is showing number of microorganisms of species A and number of microorganisms of species B. Now, it is now time affecting the number of microorganisms. We must get that very well and clearly. After looking at these graphs, try to understand them as a person before you read through the questions because it is the graphs they have told you to use to answer the questions. These ones are calibrated. You can see they have figures on both axes, okay? But they may give you other graphs which are not calibrated. Nevertheless, you can also use them. You can uh, refer to 2016 number one paper two. Those graphs were not calibrated. But these ones are well calibrated. Let's go to the first question uh, on our next uh, slide. The first question. A part essays describe the population changes. Describe the population changes. Describe the population. changes uh, of, of A and B in a long and cylindrical vessel. And they are awarding 80 marks. They are awarding 80 marks. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you this. Let's get to know the meaning of the word describe. Before we go there, I told you this type of question has its parts. It has what we call the observational marks. Observational marks. Observational marks, these ones do not involve any biology. Meaning even someone who has not uh, learned biology before can try to gamble around and get marks here. Now what of you who has learned biology for now five or six years. It means that you can earn and maximize marks here. Observational marks come from describe and compare. Remember, compare has two parts. Giving similarities and differences. Okay? Now, when they ask me to describe I'm going to talk about what I'm seeing with my naked eyes. If it is a graph, I want to get the graphical information. I describe it using words such that the person who has not seen this graph can use my interpretation of, with words to sketch the same graph. Okay? For example, someone can ask you, describe what is taking place outside, it may be 7 p.m., you're just going to talk about what you're seeing that here. I'm seeing the police running after two gentlemen. That is a description. They have not asked you to give reasons. You are just talking about what you are seeing. Now, in biology, they have now asked us to describe the change. Uh, on another day, they may ask you, uh, it may be, describe the change, describe the effect. I can also stroke this with variation. 
describe the relationship and describe uh, the rate, okay? These are different parts to talk about. When we are describing the change of variation, we talk about the trend. We talk about the trend, meaning here I'm not going to talk about what happens at a point, okay? I'm not going to talk about what happens initially because there is no trend here. We follow the trend. Describe the effect. I'm going to bring out to what the independent variable does to the dependent variable. Okay? As the concentration increases from 2 parts per million to 10 parts per million, this one happens. Or increase in concentration from 2 parts per million to 10 parts per million leads or causes the rate of glucose uptake to increase gradually. Then relationship. Relationship is always uh, when we are talking about two points. Between A and B, this happens. That is the relationship. And we are talking about two parameters. Between A and B, the population of microorganisms of species A increases rapidly, while that of species B increases gradually. We are relating two parameters. Then the rate. Here I can even talk about what happens initially. Ladies and gentlemen, to maximize the max, what am I supposed to do when describing? When describing, let's break it uh, very fast into three parts. We have the trend, okay? Then we have the change in the trend. Then we add a qualifying word. A qualifying word. Qualifying word. It may even be showing the degree of change. Degree of change in the trend. When I go back to our graph in the previous, on the previous slide, uh, let's use the, the very graphs we have to describe this. If I talk about species A, I'm going to, to get the trend from zero to five days. From zero to five days. Ladies and gentlemen, when a graph is calibrated, here they call for accuracy during description. You must be accurate. How can I get a trend as a stu uh, for starters? Use a ruler. Where the curve breaks, there is a trend. Then put the ruler on the same car curve. Where it breaks off, that is another trend. That is when you learn to be accurate. Because when the graphs are, when the axes are calibrated, it calls for accuracy during your description, ladies and gentlemen. Now, from zero to five days, what happens to the population of microorganisms of species A? The population increases. Then I'm going to add a qualifying word to this increase. This increase, ladies and gentlemen, can be gradual or slow. It can be rapid or the change may remain constant. Okay? Sorry. Here we, we, it may be an increase, a decrease, or it may remain what? Constant. Okay? Now, for this trend we are talking about, from zero to five days, the population of microorganisms of species A increases, we use an, an adjective here, gradually. That is the interpretation of that trend from zero to five days. This is a warning to us. Sometimes when we are describing, when you are writing the trend, some of us write arrogantly, let me say like that. From zero minus five days. This is a sign, subtraction sign in mathematics. Some of us even don't have time. We just summarize. That is why we end up getting summarized D max. Let us write words in full. 
Let us not take shortcuts. And when we are describing children of God, let us begin with the independent variable, always. Because it is the one which affects the dependent variable. It is better to say from zero to five days, the population of microorganisms, of species A, increases gradually. That one sounds better. But imagine if you said the population of microorganisms of species A increased gradually from zero to five days. This one literally means that the population of the microorganisms of species A at first it was zero days. Now it is five days. Related to what you can say that uh, my age increased from January to December, meaning that before you were January years old, and now you're December years old. Let us emphasize this. To be on point always, you describe in sentence form. Let every trend have its own sentence, okay? Let us look at, the, at my description on the next slide so that we get the clear meaning of what I'm talking about. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next, aha, uh -huh. very good. Here I'm talking about describe the population changes. You see, I began with a trend from zero to five days. The number of microorganisms of species A increased gradually. And then from five to 7.5 days, I'm being accurate. The number of microorganisms of species A increased rapidly. Now, as you're describing, ladies and gentlemen, let us note these ones. There are always points to note when uh, describing a graph. Uh, my graph may be like this, increases, then remains like that. Then another curve is like this. At this point, where we are seeing uh, it, when the, uh, maybe the graph remains constant, this one, the point at which it starts to remain constant is what we call a maximum. A maximum is followed by a constant. And then we have this one, which is called a peak. A peak is followed by a decrease in the number of those organisms or in the parameter. Now, when describing, you also have to bring out that because it is evident on the graph. For example, from 7.5 to 12.5 days, the number of microorganisms of species A increased gradually to a maximum. That is very important to capture. Then also you're seeing for species B, uh, the number of microorganisms are for, uh, from 10 to 11 days. The number of microorganisms of species B increased gradually to a maximum. Candidates, uh, students, children of God, you have this tendency. After the first line from zero to five days, the number of microorganisms of species A increased gradually. Then you say, it then increased rapidly as if you have been given a trend or a curve which is named it. Let us not always rush. The time is always enough for us to answer these questions very well. Always try to present your answers in a sense that you can also admire what you have written. But sometimes we always write in the to whom it may concern way. But it always concerns you in January when these results come back. It concerns you. Okay? So let us learn to write these words very well. The same way you can see. Someone may call it a repetition. But I'm trying to mean business to show us what is really supposed to take place. And that is what I can say about uh, DC cryption. You have seen, ladies and gentlemen, that in our answer, there is no biology. We are just writing English. We observe and then write what we have observed. Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. Our next slide is about to compare. This word compare, I told you it has two parts. 
It has the one for similarities. They are asking you to give similarities and also to give differences. These ones, we get them from the graphs. Next slide, please. How do we get the similarities? And how do we get the differences, ladies and gentlemen? If there are two curves, this is the approach, the simple approach I can give you for us to get the, uh, the similarities, to maximize the max for this before, before they take us through. Look at the maximum or the peak. Is it there? If both curves have the, uh, they reach the maximum, then capture it. Look at what happens. What happens before the maximum? Okay. Then, what happens towards the maximum? Okay. What happens after, after the maximum? These are points we can base on to get their comparisons. Next slide, please. Then, is there any point of uh, intersection? Is it there? Any point of intersection observed? Now, is there any other part you can base on to give the similarity? You can look at uh, the, uh, the possible answers I gave. The population, of, we begin by saying the population of both species, one, gradually increases in the first five days. I think we can see that with our naked eyes. Uh, then the population of both species increased rapidly from five to 7.5 days. I'm following the trend now. Then the population of both species gradually increased towards the maximum. Then both attained a maximum, and both remain constant after the maximum. Then there's also a point of intersection. You can only get this if you're using a ruler to be accurate. The proportion of both species was the same at 60 days. We can also think of other avenues, but for starters, these ones can give you a grip to answer max. Okay, next slide please. Now differences. With the differences, it is more or less the same approach. But here we may use a table or we may use sentences. Okay? For example, the first point. Species A has a lower population before day six. We are now comparing the two curves, the population of the two species. Here we must be accurate and we must be at the similar point. If it is a trend, we must be using the same trend. Not saying this side that uh, species A and this is species B, for example, you can also say that has a higher population at day six. Then this side you say has a higher population at day four. This is totally different. If we were to, this, to give comparison, it must be at the same point. You must use the same trend, ladies and gentlemen. It is very, very important. Once you don't give the similar trend, then you are not comparing, okay? You cannot say that I have, spe the, the, this man has got large eyes, while the other one has got large ears. You are now using different parameters. They must be the same. Even on the graph, if it's a point, it must be the same point. If it is a trend, it must be the same trend. If you're talking about a peak or maximum, it must be the same. Okay, from zero to five days, population of species uh, gradually increases. Then I'm using the same trend for species B, that from zero to five days, 
population of species B less gradually increases. I want you to capture this and note it. When describing, we seldom, or not even at all, use these words less gradually. But in a comparison, we use them because it's a comparison. I can use more or less because they are comparative words, higher or lower. Let's learn to use them. Don't say has a low population. Because you are giving differences, use the comparative words, higher, then lower, okay? You can use it faster or slower. You are doing what? You are uh, comparing these parameters, ladies and gentlemen. But that business of using low, high, it, is not, it, does, it does not even sound good. Has a higher maximum, has a lower maximum. Species A attains a maximum later. Then this one attains a maximum earlier. Those are the points we can base on when generating these differences, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I think you have picked a leaf. Let's go to the next slide and answer the uh, next uh, questions. But uh, let us try to note down these uh, points. They are very important. Part C says, study the relationship uh, that is shown in uh, figure one. When we look at that relationship, ladies and gentlemen, both the species are of, of A and B. The species of microorganisms A and B, both of them established stable climax communities in that long cylindrical vessel. Okay? I think remember that, that species A, sorry, figure one, they were growing in a long cylindrical vessel. This was the long cylindrical vessel. From figure one, Species A and species B were both in this vessel. But we can see from the graphs, both of them established stable climax communities. Then, what must have caused this? It is because of resource partitioning. For starters, what is resource partitioning? It is the dividing up of the scarce resources. Resource partitioning. Resource partitioning is the dividing up of the scarce resources so that species with similar needs or requirements use, this, use these similar resources. It may be at different times, I talked about this, times of the day, in different ways or in different places. The next part is to explain this relationship. What do we assume? It may be that these species may have migrated to different parts of the cylindrical vessel. Okay? They may have gone to different locations of this long cylindrical vessel. And this is where they specialized in obtaining food from these different locations. Okay? Now, since they are exploiting different resources in different parts of the cylindrical vessel, we do not expect competition. That is, we don't expect interspecific competition. Interspecific, interspecific what? Competition. We do not expect it. The competition that may arise, it may be competition between, the, between organisms of the same species, that is intra. But now that they are in different locations, interspecific competition is prevented, ladies and gentlemen. What does that mean? These two species are going to successfully coexist in this same habitat, okay? And that one causes the population of each species to increase and form a climax community because they are occupying different niches in this habitat. That is what we call resource partitioning, ladies and gentlemen. This one is applied in the environment where different organisms 
different species. Always we emphasize species. Where different species exist in the same habitat, use the similar resources, but at different times. Let's go to the next slide. And we see some of the examples uh, of resource partitioning. Let's look at this. The first example, as they take us to the next slide, we have the example of the lion and the leopard. If the lion and leopard are staying in the same habitat at the same time, these ones, both of them are predators. Both of them are predators. But when they are in the same habitat, the lion specializes to hunt the larger animals, the larger prey, maybe buffaloes. Then the leopard specializes to hunt the smaller prey, the smaller ones. That is an example of resource partitioning. We also have birds of prey, the hawks and the owls. These ones also feed on similar prey, okay? But hawks hunt during day, while the owls hunt during the night. Next slide, please. The next slide is asking us to explain the population changes of the species A and B from uh, uh, up to day seven, uh, up to, uh, up to uh, that is uh, to seven and a half days. This population for both organisms increased and the increase was gradual. When they ask you to increase, sorry, to explain, I beg your pardon. Explain has two parts. It has that part of describe, which does not involve biology, and also give reasons. Okay? When they ask me, explain what is happening outside after 7 p.m. The police is running after two men. That is my description. Then the reason, because they are walking after or during the time of curfew. I may not be knowing the reason, but I can describe, meaning I can still earn marks on the question which is explain. Unless if they say, even when they say account for, it calls for the same. I'm going to give reasons for that trend. Now, the population change for the two species of organisms uh, up, to day, up to seven and a half days increases gradually. Because these organisms are existing when the resources are enough and there is no competition. Then from seven and a half days, what are we seeing? The population of species A continue to increase rapidly, but that of B decreased gradually to extinction. This is because of the competition that set in, okay, for these two organisms. And that led uh, to the species A to outcompete species B. Species A fed more, reproduced more, and then their numbers did what? Increased. And then B decreased to extinction. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you very, very much uh, for this. We can continue to look at this. Because of time, I'm not meant to complete. But we can continue to read these questions and also get a clear meaning of what resource partitioning and the competitive exclusion principle is. I thank you very much. May the good Lord bless you. Uh, Master Alex C. Na chibi ngo kufwa yugana mata zaise sina mugongo. Ntia ira, ababade bago bedira, kakasa nti baso bode okutegeira, evi nitu wino obulunji. Ninyo kwa kutegeza, nti guomana, kaso wangu manyi nti olimu semi-candid class, obamu candid class, enteka teka wedi, wano kutebe faini yafe. Abazade mongero kubiriza abana, okubanga baji okumirako, okusobulu kubanga nti bago bedira okusoma. Bagendo kudayo, ate mwubisela bide 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 okusomero, ngatemena chipa firidua, na dalaba wali mu candid class. Tuongero kwe baza, abubu na watade mwa nsimbi, Damo maso, okule sumeru ya, ya badafa haba Ameri and High School wentebe, ate ida ni badafa haba Green Hill Schools, ate ko kosa ni nkumba university. Peni ya biki, ya peni joino kodisa, ngo wandika. Ni waku wasa ini menti, umanyi yonizo kuwandisa peni joino subi ya ntia koze bulunji, okuendo kutanga ngeringi ya sanu kide mchitabo. Na ye peni ya biki, ya peni joino kodisa, ate bi wandisa bisigare munga dalabirunji, okusobu kubanti ate uh, toswala 
nga waka uta tegele kaburu unji. Abamu mbana watuwa mita volongoto. Onizo kuwa nika vya wanisa umanyi mitufu nenga wa wanisa volongoto. Tuwa kwa sa peni etali intufu peni ya biki. Jyo ino kubanga okoza sa. Onako walero, lesson za febozi to wezi komie. Nenga jukila kutelefa ini yafe. Kwa ino kusiga lango funa pletizo na izige na maso. Nadele kwa tagana ne COVID-19. Atela mungeri ye mu. Ino kusiga lango tukwa program za fendala ezenja. Utugena mwanda bautu. Sikala ngolaba telefa ini yafe. Aikatonda kuma maso moji.